So today we are going to be doing a very, 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 very professional video on Microsoft Paint. Um, today we're doing a discussion piece on the Ultra Impact Anniversary and to visually show you guys uh, in a nice YouTube format, I'm just going to do it on Microsoft Paint. I don't know how else I was going to do it. So um, we're going to discuss the positives, negatives, the improvements that I want, things to consider um and what i want from ultra impact in general in the future whether it comes from um the anniversary or just you know from year one to year two essentially so let's um i think the best thing to do is just do a um little like quadrant i don't know i i, I can't accurately do thirds on a square piece of paper or rectangle piece of paper so i think quad quadrants will be good for this video and i put my webcam in the middle here so that it doesn't like any writing is should be all good okay uh let's go and you know do some texts so uh first off i think we should discuss about the uh, positives i think we should always start with positives in this game so i'm um, just uh, if you want the tldr i really think it, it was a very mid anniversary i wouldn't consider it bad um i haven't really witnessed like i haven't played a game to be honest where i had a bad anniversary um, I would say, because I only played Dokkan and this game, I would say comparative to Dokkan, well, if you compared to the 7th anniversary, which was the recent anniversary to um, Dokkan compared to this recent anniversary, then I would say the Dokkan anniversary was better. But if you compare like the first year anniversary of Dokkan and the first anniversary of Ultra Impact, I would say the Ultra Impact had a better anniversary. Okay, so that, that's my standpoint there. But, uh, of course, um, people would like like to say, like, oh, because this is, um, we're in the 2022 20, now. Yeah, anniversary should be, um, you know, more more up to date with what Dokkan's doing. But uh, I'll talk about that in a bit. But TLDR, it is mid. Uh, I, 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 as much as I love this game, it, you just got to say it's mid at this point. Uh, and, and anybody telling you, like, oh, this is a really, really good anniversary is probably lying to themselves. Um, just to make them feel better. I, I, I just want to be transparent as possible. So let's talk about positives for the anniversary. Okay, nice text. Good, dude, good. And then I uh, hopefully you can read that. It's not too small or something like that in the video. Let's do 20, uh, 20 font. Should be fine. Dash. Yeah, yeah, 20. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller. Let's go 18. Sorry, this is, um, again, this is very professional. So let's see. I have some notes on the side of me because I did like think about this thoroughly it's not off the top of my head or anything like that because i've had a few days to think about what was good what was bad and all that stuff and everything so positives i think were the pay-to-play characters all right the pay-to-play characters are amazing end of story uh they are the strongest in just strongest um pvp meta uh they had new abilities Okay, I think when a new anniversary character comes out, I feel like it is non-negotiable that they have to provide something new. And in this case, it was Overwhelm and Persistence. Those two abilities were absolutely insane and are absolutely insane. Um, Persistence may be the better one. And hopefully it's unique enough uh, for the long run so that the anniversary characters can age quite a bit. I don't really want them to be like out of the question of best PvP unit um, in like six months down the line. So... Hopefully these new abilities to stand, but as of right now, it is amazing. It, it, when it comes to pay-to-play characters or the newest summonable character, they should be top tier. Now, does it make PvP a little bit toxic and very annoying? If you didn't pull it, yes. Yes, and that's just how it is when it comes to PvP. Uh, you can't balance everything. You've, if you've ever seen, if you've done any multiplayer game, you know there is a meta for everything, and then everybody will sink into that meta and um it will just be annoying and more annoying and more annoying especially if you don't have said um pay-to-play characters but that i don't think is the biggest issue now the next topic i want to talk about is impact fest so that gave us the introduction of something that we really wanted which was uh 1.5 x rates which equals to six percent ur rate now thanks to vorpal and the discord for making this chart to describe the pool rate of pulling a UR with this impact vest. So it's 6% on one pull. If you do a multi, it is almost a 50% chance you are going to be pulling a UR, which is very awesome. 
Now, of course, that is split up between the specific anniversary units. Hopefully, you can see in this. I'll, I'll try to zoom in as much as I can here. So, yeah, it's four point, like 5% to pulling the specific anniversary character, 9% to pull any anniversary character, um, and then, or almost 10%, and then 10% for the new anniversary memory. And then, of course, adding them all together, that is an 18% chance of pulling a brand new anniversary uh, memory or character. Which is pretty good in one multi. I feel like that is some good rates for an impact fest. And then, you know, obviously the percentages of mathematics comes down to the play that it will pretty much be a hundred percent chance in two hundred pulls to pull a UR. Like you are almost pretty much guaranteed to pull a UR in at least three multis, unless you are the most unluckiest player in the world. Now, obviously, that is for any UR character. And getting a specific UR is um, not one hundred percent until you reach the pity down here. But I think this is, if you look at just having to see the percentage on a multi, I think it's pretty good for the rates. Um, and I, I feel like you shouldn't be uh, uh, too mad about that. And uh, in this case, it is worth going to pity just to get an extra, if you don't have the extra character or just getting the extra memory. So um, I like that. Hopefully they do that more in the future, maybe every three months or something like that. Uh, fingers crossed. Another thing that I liked about it is the power spike. I think if you don't have a power spike on the anniversary, uh, then the anniversary is not interesting at all. And this comes from the DX and EX skills, obviously, and the pay to play characters. Uh, DX and EX skill, I think, are more of a power spike than the actual characters. Uh, they give you so much more higher BP. Uh, the memory stats are insane. Honestly, because of this, DX and EX skills, I think PvP is actually just became the most annoying mode ever. Um, it's just, it, it, it really, it really makes PvP or Ultra Arena just really annoying. Whether you like it or not, you can, it definitely gives like the whale um, players that more like, you know, buff and just more dominance in a way. Uh, so it, it is very annoying for sure, but it is a power spike that I do like. If you don't care about ultra arena then this makes the game easier in every single way uh next up is the 100 free ticket summons uh 100 free ticket summons is amazing 10 free multis uh it was double the i, I believe double the amount of half anniversary so uh hopefully that will increase you got to think about the future it, it will definitely increase obvious uh hopefully um half any double amount of half any so um, that was great and it had an exclusive reward which um may be a questionable thing but um yeah 100 free summons i mean you can't really complain about that uh and yeah let's move on three x drops the first time it's ever the uh, first time it's ever done three x drops i mean it has you if you grinded a character on two x drops you know how big that is if you've grinded a character for three x drops you definitely know how good that is, right? It's so stamina efficient. Um, really, really good. Next up, producer letter. I think having that producer letter was amazingly hype. Uh, it gave a sense of community, knowing that, you know, the producer would make a video uh, describing the news, giving us the details on the character early, essentially creating hype. And I think every anniversary should have that for sure. Um, some sort of social media post that was very personal um, to show what was coming for the anniversary. And I guess this is a small little thing, but it had um, the Limber Breaker shards, um, Limber Breaker shards, uh, pieces or whatever they are for um, the for the memories, which is very important and needed but uh, for, because of the DX skills on memory. So I would say that is probably the best things about the anniversary in all things considered. I don't think there's much left to say after that. So now let's go into the negatives about the anniversary here. There's quite a bit to go through, which is why uh, <laughs> we're going to have to change the font to 18. So let's go to negatives. All right, so let's just jump straight into it. 
I think uh, the first one has got to be like the biggest one, the iOS issue. It was five days for people to, or something like that. It was almost a week at least of not being able to play the game for some players, which is huge for an anniversary that only lasted for two weeks or something like that. Um, yes, they had compensation. Uh, but I think the conversation was not that great. Uh, it was great if you didn't have the issue, but for those that had the issue, I don't think 250 gems and stamina was enough. 250 gems was pretty much the uh, daily singles that you missed out on. And then the stamina, you could have got like three times the amount of stamina that you would have received um, playing the actual game, accepting all of your, um, you know, uh, dispatches, your hero base stuff and the missions itself. So... I feel like um, they should have figured out who or what devices had the issue and then doubled it, at least doubled it. So then you got the 250 gems for your free singles that you missed out on and then 250 gems that you were supposed to get from the conversation to equal out what we people that didn't experience the issue got, essentially. Uh, so that was bad. And of course, you missed out on the first ever 3x drop, I believe. So um, if you're a new player... As well, you wouldn't have been able to catch up as easily as people that started out the game on the anniversary with three X drops. So, yeah, big issue there. Uh, and probably the biggest issue. And there is, like, some leeway for them because it only happened on global. And they do follow, like, the global version does follow the same APK, or I guess the same, like, app as the JP version. Since the JP version didn't have this issue, um, it I guess they had to get their own staff to figure out what was the issue, which was so annoying like if jp got the issue we would have at least gotten it done but in two or one days because i don't think it was that big of a problem to begin with especially if jp had it all fine so because it was only a global issue i felt like they didn't really care enough or didn't have enough staff on it to try to fix it on their own because if you i think the jp version is one version behind now um, just because of that issue and anybody who doesn't have that issue is one version behind at that point in time i think with the present mic update maybe it's all the same now but yeah it's 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 a bit of a problem um next up we have uh the story event i think the story event was too regular uh the character even though he was very good like uh mirror was very good mirror just wasn't special like it didn't look special Like, if I showed you Mirio, like, one year down the line and you were a brand new player, you would never, ever, ever expect Mirio to be the first year anniversary character. Uh, what they could have done was the fantasy characters, or um, at least somebody, like they did with Dokkan, with Goku, that he holds the his finger up to show that it's the first year anniversary, and then out down the line, there were two, three, four, five, whatever. So I feel like it just didn't, match with anything it, the only thing that matched was the storytelling uh the cutscenes, which i don't think a lot of people cared or at least some of the dedicated play players don't care i think the like very very big enjoyers of ultra impact and just like readers would enjoy but for me it wasn't like something great and i think the event didn't have any increase in rewards so the only thing they added was the limit breaker pieces and it wasn't even enough so limit breaker pieces should have increased for sure uh and so yeah i can at least limit break one sr memory because i don't think they give enough they give like 10 or something for limit breaker pieces which it's not even enough to limit break anything why do i have to wait two events because the new present mic event has 10 limit breaker sr pieces to limit break an sr which is so dumb so yeah, I feel like they should have increased the rewards, at least doubled it some way, or like increased like the gold amounts, yeah, all that stuff. Because a lot of new players will join on the anniversary, so having like more features on to get materials and stuff, especially where the people are going to be summoning a lot on the impact fest rates, uh, they'll probably get an abundance amount of new URs. And with how the system is in Ultra Impact. It's going to take you a very long time to upgrade those characters to the ninth table free to play. So they should have done it for this one time. I know they do the three X drops, but um, you also got to consider the gold needed, the training items needed, and the memory items needed to upgrade 
um, the levels of those. So they should have increased that. The next issue, I felt like it was too short. Uh, two weeks is just another normal event. If, if they have implemented the improvements, which we'll get into, you could have easily made it into one month worth of an anniversary, which would have been really, really good at the end of the day. So because it was so short and there wasn't uh, only a burst amount of real new content, uh, the rest of like the 70% worth the rest of the anniversary was kind of just mid. I feel like the first two days were so good and then it dropped after that. <laughs> Which is why they need to have two parts and, um, you know, have like good normal stuff in the first fight, what we had, and then boom, another thing. Uh, and then the last thing was that I wanted to talk about in the negatives is not enough true free-to-play experiences. So what I mean by that is if you were fully free-to-play, you didn't get much. <laughs> You didn't get much. You got a Mirio, and that's it. And some Limbo Breaker shards and stuff like that. Uh, what they should have done was maybe a farmable UR orb. Something guaranteed. I feel like when you say true free-to-play experience, I mean like guaranteed. Like pink tickets are not a true free-to-play experience because it's all based on RNG. They should have made that UR memory free-to-play. Uh, they should have added another boss rush, which they've already did like a week ago before the anniversary began. So that would have been great. More better rewards. Something like that, you know? Like something where other than like the normal stuff like VTOW Ultra Arena, like free to play could enjoy and get stuff from. Uh, but there was just nothing there. So yeah, I feel like that was probably the last thing I thought about in terms of the negatives, really. Um, even though there's like less dot points than the positives, I feel like these just out trump most of the things here. Okay, so now that we've gone through the positive and negatives, let's go through some improvements that would have made the anniversary a lot better, okay? Um, it's now in the past, but it's good to just look back and see what you could have done. I felt like more gems, easily, more gems, silver tickets. I think they gave good amount of gems in the pre-anniversary. They should have kept going, man. Oh, serious, not gems. Silver ticket. They should have kept going. They had the momentum on the um, pre-anniversary login. If they kept going, uh, they they would have it would have been so good. I feel, um, and the reason why I want more gems and silver tickets over like pink tickets is because you get the chances to summon uh, on the one five one point five x. It's pretty much more it equals to more chances on one point five x. I don't even know if you can use silver tickets on the one point five five x, but more chances on the 1.5x banner. Um, making it inherently more free-to-play friendly, I guess. Um, so yeah. More chances on 1.5x banner would have been great. Next thing that I would like to be improved on would be... Like I said, make the event prove that you played the Annie. Um, improvements pretty much on free-to-play Mario, essentially. You know, that's I, we've already touched up on that, you know, making that UR memory or even just like a free to play SR memory that looks like, you know, you played the anniversary at the very least to prove it instead of having that uh, UR memory behind that pink ticket. I think a uh, tough event that implements, that utilizes uh, the new power spike would have been amazing. Uh, like they do on Dokkan with their God events or... Um, the red zone event, something that pro something that makes the pay to play characters more valuable in that sense, instead of just PVP and VE tower, um, would have been great. I felt like there was no struggle. The only struggle was PVP because everybody had that big improvement. So if there was like a PVE kind of situation where we could see the full powers of the Deku and the Bakugo. It would have been amazing. Um, obviously, you've, we've seen that PUR rarity. We've seen that PUR rarity asset in the the folders of the game. I mean, they could have done something with that, but obviously that wasn't like a huge issue. But it could have been an improvement regardless. Um, a special edition of PVP or VE Tower. Uh, it was PVP resetted pretty much on the dot for anniversary they could have done something crazy there like uh you got more points on using deku or bakugo like they do with like the event like uh more 
like something simple like more of that red currency for playing the anniversary character or something like that something to incentivize more on summoning for Deku and Bakugo would have been really nice and then maybe the same thing for V Tower like uh, if you wanted 2x the coins that you wanted it would have been great for free to play like brand new players as well you know so something like that right or like uh, a new V Tower stage where uh, the and of the fantasy characters were the bosses or something. Yeah, you know, that would have been really cool. That would have been really cool. And then I think the final thing that I want to be improved would be more jump start features, which we just talked about. Kind of more jump start features, or for for new players. Uh, they did that for the six year anniversary, the awakening missions. I think another one would have been great. So having two. Uh, and new player login stuff, more ways to earn training items or uh, advanced stuff, advanced, advanced leveling stuff. Something to pretty much allow the newer player to start getting closer and closer and closer to achieving the uh, legend ranking in Ultra Arena would be good, uh, EX skill stuff, etc. Regardless of 3x drop, you still are limited to the amount of stamina you can use per day, which is very annoying for a new player. Uh, and having them forced to do the story event, they're missing out on um, like the, the actual story event. So ways to like go away from the story event for this time period would have been really cool to see. But yeah, that's pretty much the improvements. Of course, a part two, all that stuff would have been amazing. Uh, which, if you counted the new event that is coming out as far as the anniversary, even though it's not with the uh, free-to-play UR, uh, then that would have been really sick for a part two. Just a part two free-to-play UR would have been more than enough, honestly. And uh, yeah, we have been really good with the anniversary. Now, I want to defend the anniversary a little bit here so in this box i do want to say things to consider it was a jp version anniversary so when it came to the character selection i think it did favor uh what the jp audience wanted because i think jp players like costumes more than anything else and since the fantasy was like a part of the series technically at the end credits of season two uh, they felt like that was the most popular decision to go with. I want to say this as well. If you are complaining and you only played the global version, like you only started playing on the global version, there is actually no room for you to complain about this anniversary because technically your game is only like three to four months old. While I feel like only JP players, people that have played since the JP launch, can complain about whether or not, you know, there's enough content in this game because they were the ones who experienced the whole year while we as global players have only experienced four months and so you gotta think that this is just technically a new character for just the month essentially and because you got like extra rewards all you can say is that this little celebration was actually pretty good uh next up would be the ios issue was only global and I feel like they have a, a small staff, so they they had to figure it out themselves instead of uh, cooperately, um, you know, getting help from the JP side, since they always just copy and paste from JP. A lot of people wanted returning events for the anniversary, but I feel like because JP already got all of that stuff, they just don't care about it. So JP just doesn't care about returning events. Which is what a lot of people want. They want, like, all the new free-to-play characters to be able to be farmed up again. But I think a lot of the JP dedicated players just don't care because they already done it. Uh, and that wouldn't have been a new experience for them. For those that did not like how it was Bakugo and Deku again, they have to come in terms that the popularity for characters for Deku and Bakugo as a character is by far just the best, okay? Uh, if we look at the popularity polls in Japan, you can see Bakugo Deku, top two, with Todoroki as the third. But like, look how far it is difference. Like three, almost 3,000 votes difference from Deku to Todoroki 
go to the six, Bakugo and Deku. Okay? And then the fifth, Bakugo and Deku. So obviously, if you wanted the popular choice, it's got to be Bakugo and, De Bakugo and Deku. Now, this one obviously has Todoroki in the fourth poll, um, but they haven't released a Bakugo or Deku since the global release, I guess, in a very long time. So yeah, the obvious choice averagely is Bakugo and Deku throughout the whole entire way. So you cannot just like say like, oh, I, I wanted present mike because you know he has to be representing the game the the anniversary is meant to be like the popular decision wins essentially so those are the things you should consider so the end product of this anniversary was that it favored veteran players of all things which you can say is what an anniversary can be all about because you know you celebrate with the people that come up with you but unfortunately this is an app that is accessible to everyone because it is free to play so when it comes to you know celebrating with your veteran players it will be advertised to the mass audience and newer players will end up coming in anyway so uh, that is why you have to always consider the free-to-play experience because if the free-to-play players cannot access this new event, essentially it is considered to them a dead anniversary or a dead like time period other than doing what they could have done at any point in time, which is the story event. So you have to definitely cater to new players as well. You had the strongest PvP meta, DX and EX skills are very whale-esque like stuff and for the whales out there essentially they don't care about free-to-play URs or free-to-play SR so that's probably why they didn't do too much when it came to the event as well now what would I want in ultra impact in the future of course infinite farming of the limit breaker pieces would be great or at least some sort of mission to daily farm one limit breaker piece per day would have been amazing or EX skill pieces would be cool. Getting one daily or something. Because re-rolling now for EX and skills are some of the most annoyingest things ever. If you want to keep up um, in the Ultra Arena space. Of course, the general audience wants a raid boss. I mean, that's obvious. Hopefully that comes out in the future. Uh, more free-to-play URs instead of SRs. Which it looks like they are going to be doing with the new All for One event. And then increase ranking rewards as well. I just don't think um, getting to uh, Legend Top 50 is even worth it. Even just getting to Legend is just fine. I feel like they should just increase it just for the sake of it. Uh, and, and as well as the VE Tower stuff. And also Pity Carry Over, of course. Those are the five things I really want from uh, Ultra Impact. It's nothing too crazy. It should be um, something that should be added into the game. I feel like more daily stuff would be great. So... Yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up before it gets any longer than this. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Let me know your thoughts about the anniversary. Again, it's just normal. It's just almost normal with a bit of a twist. Um, there's obviously some good points. And it looks as though the game is still improving. I felt like they should have just... Like, they've shown the um, UR character. They should have just chucked it in into the anniversary. Just to um, give it that oomph instead. But, yeah. Uh... I'm going to wrap it up here. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on so you don't miss out on daily content. Check out my social medias linked in the description. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, stay fizzy. Peace out.